Hey everyone, are you enjoying the most boring anniversary yet? Well, let's talk about 10 things that need to change in the global version of Final Fantasy Brave Exits. This was another idea that my Discord um, users, fans, I don't know how to call them, let's call them um, Discord users or users on my Discord. Uh, suggested to me you know, a couple of days ago and that I liked and truth be told I had right 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 around about 15 ideas or things that I wanted to talk about but I made or I actually recorded this video prior with 15 and the video was an hour long so I decided yeah let's not do another one hour video <laughs> and I trimmed this down to 10 I will try to keep it short because I don't really want to annoy you guys with an hour long video. Alright, so uh, these are all my opinion, but I think it's for the better of the game. So let's get right into it with number 10. We're going in descending order, obviously, or ascending in importance. Item world. As you might know, Item World on the global server is only up for two weeks per month. Um, on the Japanese server, it is permanently up. It refreshes the rewards, especially refresh every month on the first. And the global server, for whatever reason, has it one, uh, once per month for two weeks. Why? Why do we have only two weeks per month to stress out over a few weapons? Why not just leave it open for 24-7 basically? And another thing is, why are the raids still this bad? Like, I tried getting 30% magic on Luis's gun, for example, for, I don't know, 10 attempts. The best I got was 19%. This really needs to change because Item World is one of the worst features in the game. It's, from my point of view, it's even worse than Arena, and I despise Arena with a passion. I hate Arena so much, but I hate Item World even more than that. And another thing is, why didn't we get the item world updates yet? Um, on the Japanese server, for example, you can get different rares on your weapons. Pretty much all rares are unlocked for most weapons. Thus, you could, for example, I believe you could get um, a magic rare on a sword, for example. If I'm not totally mistaken, don't take this word by word, but I believe that's the case. Still, we're missing so many updates the Japanese server has, and Item World is one of the worst features that is still around. Generally speaking, I would really like if they revamped Item World in general, making it five stages instead of ten, um, increasing the probability of higher rates with each stage more significantly than it does right now, and all would be good. But Item World, as it is right now, is easily the worst feature in the game and it needs serious change, from my point of view. Next one, similar vein, Raid Orbs. Like, we have five Raid Orbs and there is a thing called sleep, which each human has to do. And, like, take me for example, I have to go to sleep at roughly around midnight to 1am and I wake up at 8am usually for work. That's seven hours. That, that means that two orbs, at minimum two orbs, will just not refill because I am at five orbs. Why not just increase the orbs to ten? What's so hard about this? What harm is going to be done? If, if the harm done is that we might get the rewards faster, why not just start the week off when the maintenance ends and the raid event starts, start with five orbs, but have it replenished to ten if we, for example, due to real life circumstances, decide to uh, start the game two, three hours later. No harm done to anyone. I mean, they increased the arena orbs from five to 10 last year, so why can't we have 10 raid orbs? It's, I don't know, gummy. It's just gummy things. Next thing, the damage charts. We got them finally, but they are basically useless because I don't care when I'm when I'm doing a trial, I don't care who deals how much damage. The only importance is the boss is dead at the end of the fight and my team is alive. Who de who dealt 1 billion damage and who dealt 12 million damage, I don't really care. What I do care about though 
is who deals the most damage in Dark Visions or Clash of Wales, because this is actually the only end game that we have and each point of damage actually counts versus Trials where damage doesn't count. You can take this to turn 2000, wouldn't even matter as long as the boss is dead at the end of the fight. But for Clash of Wales or Dark Visions, every single point of damage matters because that determines the rewards you get at the end. And uh, not having a damage chart being present is just, I don't know, it's annoying. I mean, you can circumvent this in Clash of Wales by actively or forcefully wiping the fight, but that's just a band-aid fix. It just doesn't solve the problem at all. You still have to wipe. You don't get the rewards at all if you wipe. So all you get is the little information that if you did something wrong, yeah, that one specific unit probably was outside the chain. But you will never know who dealt how much damage on a good attempt that yielded you a kill, for example. And that is something they need to change. It has to happen. I have no clue why Gumi hasn't fixed this issue yet. Issue yet. I know on the JP server, Dark Visions, they have the uh, damage charts. Why can't we on the global server? It's the only actual content where it matters. It's beyond me, to be honest. Next up is global buffs for dead on arrival units. That's what the OA stands for. Units such as Emperor Vlad or Guardian Blade Charlotte, they were released dead on arrival. Nobody cared about them and neither should you, honestly. I've talked about this in my or in the specific unit reviews. Nobody cared about Vlad or Charlotte because they are so outdated that even Noppy or older units such as Last Gen were stronger than both of them or Guardian played Charlotte. I mean Vlad, yeah, he did surprisingly well but setting him up is like, uh, it's a huge headache. He's locked to dark if you want to use him as a finisher, so not all that useful at all. Another thing is, how can units such as Cobalt Blade and Octus of Vermilion Blade Arden get buffs? They were totally unwarranted. Both units would have been still super strong without these buffs. When underperformant, uh, underperforming units such as Vlad or Charlotte, they get thrown under the bus with no care in the world. How can this even happen? I mean, sure, we all are happy because we can sk skip these banners and just stockpile Lapis, but at the end of the day, Gumi is still a business and they want us to pull as often as possible with potentially using money for it. And they won't get that money if they don't make exciting banners. And exciting banners, especially for DPS, means each new DPS unit has to be kind of the best at what they're doing. And this isn't going to be an issue more so than ever after Sephiroth releases. And I talked about this yesterday, that the meta is going to be very, very stale and boring once Sephiroth is released on the global server. So yeah, this is something that we are hopefully going to see more and if not well good for us we don't need to pull we can stockpile lapis until the end of time or until the end of service of this game because i won't spend any money and so shouldn't you next up number six is inventory clutter like i don't know what your situation is in the inventory but mine is literally almost always at max capacity like literally every day I log in, I have to sell a hundred, easily 100 pots of the mini pots, especially because they just stockpile. Why can't we just stack Google's characters or pots? The reserves we gotten, they were just a really bad band-aid fix. They don't accomplish anything. They just postpone the, the issue. Yeah, you could stockpile I believe 1,800 um, units and or um, pots, characters, etc. Both my inventory and reserves are full. Now sure one could say just sell your 1,000 characters. I could do that, yeah, definitely. But that doesn't solve the issue. You're just prolonging the issue because I will hit that same ballpark again two or three months later. We really need a complete inventory UI user interface overhaul at this point. Not only is it a bad interface that needs lots of explanation to new players, 
but it's also just really, really bad and unresponsive for veterans and everyone else. All right, next up, same ballpark, we need a combat log. If you did Morgana in Clash of Wales last week or the week before that, it's a perfect example of why we need a combat log. I've had so many questions as to why did Morgana suddenly um, absorb my light damage. Well, truth be told, if the game had a combat log, it would tell you that the boss just buffed himself up with a light absorption buff. But the game doesn't. You just... Especially when you push multiple thresholds, Morgana just fires all her abilities and at the top of the at the top of the screen, screen, you just see a line of text vanish within half a second, probably. You cannot read it as quickly as it disappears, and you're just left wondering what is even going on. And a combat log would just help us figure out what is going on, how can we prevent stuff, and things in the game would stop being so vague because one thing I really hate and I hate it for trials especially is when things are too vague and I have to resort to outside sources such as the wiki it, it's just a huge annoyance it, uh, it also enables a disconnect between the game and the player because we have to go out of our way outside of the game boot up our laptop PC or whatever or leave the game or close the game and uh, open up Google Chrome, Safari, whatever you're using. Boot up uh, the wiki and check what is going on in the game instead of having the information all within one place. I mean, there is there was a famous meme last year or two years ago where the dev said, I believe it was when Esther got released, don't rely on outside sources, only our information are valid. And the information they provide, even to this very day, is, yeah, ability X, Y does buff Z, but we don't tell you how much it is. Like, do they really think we are that dumb that we cannot fathom any information? Just give us the information straight up or make or give us the option to opt in for really advanced information. I know we do have that option that we can have advanced information, but how about an option that gives us literally every ounce of information that we want if we want them? Because I'm one of those guys who wants the information. I want to know what is going on. How much is something doing in damage terms? I can calculate this stuff. I don't mind doing this math or whatever. I just want to know what is happening and I don't want to always um, get out of the game, check out the wiki because it's just annoying. Just give us the information. And a combat log would solve all of these issues. The next one is another super annoying issue is that Gumi is super stingy. Like the any quote unquote anniversary rewards are a prime example out of this. We were promised, and I hate the word promise, um, 10k lapers at any given point in time. They did not specify when we are getting the 10k, but at least we are getting 5k right now. However, those 5k, they are drip feed equipped across 20 days which is I mean I understand from a uh, business side of things you want to keep players engaged uh, thus increasing the monthly active users MAU which is a key performance indicator for companies and their shareholders but it is ultimately anti-consumer and it just really does not bode well that for an anniversary we have to wait 20 days to receive half the value that we were promised and we have no information about the remaining 5k that we are supposed to get. I would suggest we're getting the next 5k within the next 20 days after these 20 days are up or 21 days. It's actually 21. The 21st will see us getting a Transcension Pearl, which is Wednesday next, or Wednesday next week. And I believe Final Fantasy VII is next, would make sense kind of. And they'd start the second part of the quote unquote anniversary and uh, start the next 5k, but 5k lapis, but it's just bad. I mean, what's also super bad is that they are taking away lapis from us, or generally speaking, 
good rewards such as the um, tickets that you can use on banner instead we are getting more x tickets these days which have less value than um, regular tickets for example without making up for it like we don't have the story visit anymore or story digest the jp server got we don't get story events apparently anymore technicals and it's not being made up for elsewhere like i would not be surprised in the slightest if the um, total lapis gained in july is only marginally higher than it was in june or may just to reiterate i believe in june we got around 22k lapis i would not be surprised in any kind of form if the july lapis we got were close to 25k so just a marginal increase in lapis just for comparison's sake throughout the last year when we still had story re revisit we were constantly hovering around 25k to 30k lapis gained each month so yeah uh, also there are a few studies that show that contingent rewards increase intrinsic interest i do have two sources of that in the pinned comments so if you're interested in, in that feel free to check it out it's uh, two papers that are pretty interesting to read and um, the easiest way to to tell you how, what this means actually is that the more rewards you get or the perceived value of rewards you get yields a higher interest in actually playing the game thus having an outside effect which may attract new and or returning players and attracting new and or returning players is something that Gumi really is trying to do right now. It was very evident in their last anniversary stream, uh, I believe two or three weeks ago, where they really, really wanted to make sure that you bring your friends that quit the game back into the game because everything is cool and awesome, which it's not. But they really did go out of their way to make sure that old and or new players come into the game because they need new players badly and one way to do this is super easy just give out rewards that have a good perceived value i'm not strictly talking lapis here it's just switching back to regular tickets instead of ex tickets because once players realize that ex tickets are the worst deal they're gonna lose interest or one could argue that giving us omniprisons or Moogle containers. Do you guys remember Moogle containers? Those are cool rewards too. And um, just it, it, it's just a matter of how do we perceive the value of each reward we get. And I would say Lapis, yeah, while it's cool on paper, Lapis don't really do much these days other than enabling you to pull. I'm talking about more options for shards for our new vision units because what is the worst feeling for a new player that probably for example gets access to luna freya right now he can't or she he or she can't do anything with luna freya because the greatest value comes when she's at ex plus one but that new player has no means of ex plus one in that said luna freya because there's no shard dungeon he or she is at zero shards nothing to do with that unit and one of the perceived values would be to a make the game better for new players and or returning players they have a few mechanics for that such as the um, comeback tickets but those really don't do much from what i've seen and uh, veterans alike need also more incentives to keep sticking around and the anniversary rewards at the time of this video they are not meant for for us veterans they're just yeah we're kind of celebrating ourselves right now but thanks for sticking around that is what the anniversary has been so far but yeah that is one of the issues i have with the game right now number three is the 13 login charts meme i don't know how you guys feel about the 30 login charts but i am still kind of triggered every single time I'm seeing 30 login shard shards for any unit. Yes, we do get enough VIP coins to get most if not all of the units to EX plus one for free. It is delayed grat gratification because you have to wait two weeks once the banner is out 
to get the unit to EX plus one for free. Now, as an example of how you to do this better is the JP server. On the JP server, you get 50 login shards within the first week to EX plus one the unit. It, you still gotta wait one week, but at least you're getting the 50 shards. The global server or global players have to wait two weeks to then go out of their own way to buy the 20 remaining shards from the VIP shop with VIP coins to EX plus one the unit. And by the time you can do this, take for example, there's a Clash of Wales or Dark Visions currently running, that unit may ha not have any value anymore to you. Because outside of Clash of Wales or Dark Visions, there is no content to use the unit on. Because we are apparently not getting any more trials, there's only one remaining and that one is a complete joke. So uh, yeah, the Souls 30 login shards, it had some merit when trials were still coming out at a regular basis, but not anymore. And 30 login shards, it's, it's a predatory system too. Because if Dark Visions or Clash of Wales is running, you kind of have to spend either lapis or money to get the remaining shards, but then you end up on a on an odd number that doesn't really do anything for you. And um, the, the better way would be to lessen the gains in VIP coins um, and give us 50 shards instead. I would be totally fine if we only received half the VIP coins per month than we do now, but instead gained 50 login shards. I would be totally fine with that because that means we can have almost immediate value out of the units. Like take for example, um, Lord of the Seas Nicole. I got him for free, yeah, but I can't use him. He's useless at EX plus zero. And by the time I can EX plus one him, which is in uh, one and a half weeks when his banner is gone, he won't be of any use because Dark Visions will have ended or will it? No, I think it's going to be the second week of Dark Visions, but by that time I won't care about Dark Visions anymore because I cannot get to rank one anyway. And yeah, that's all about it. I mean, it's a bad system. Or another solution to this issue would be to change the cycle of shard dungeon. Instead of having it once every three months, um, we could have this item world um, pace, like each month, two weeks with two to three shards per run and unit, you could make this random such that on average, you would still get the same result as once um, running it once every three months at five shards per unit and run. However, the upside would be we could still EX plus one our units within a very certain fixed time frame instead of two weeks after they are released. It's such an easy fix, it doesn't harm and it doesn't harm the bottom line of Gumi as well. Because if someone wasn't going to pay with either 5k lapis for the shards or with money for the bundles anyway, he will just have that unit sitting around. It does not hurt the bottom line at all. Because if it did, Alum wouldn't do it anyway too. It's just the easy reasoning. All right, next up, number two, and we're getting to the very crucial parts, actual fun content. Like, do you guys remember the Telfusian challenge where we had a fixed trial with fixed gearing and we couldn't change anything and it didn't matter if you owned the units or not? That was fun. Because everyone can enjoy it. It doesn't matter if you're playing the game for one day, 20 minutes, or have been playing it for five years straight. It's a challenge that could work as a puzzle, you figure it out, or you watch my videos or Sincer's videos on how we do it and just copy the strat. But generally speaking, those were the days when we had trials that actually mattered, that required you to have a strategy that didn't wipe you out if you made a, just a single mistake. No, that was fun. Clash of Wills is not fun and neither is Dark Visions, but for different reasons, because both are catering to whales, while Telfusians, for example, that, that was just fun. Or take the um, boss, boss rush events. Yeah, they, they are kind of annoying because you have to give for five different enemies, but those are still fun and require you to kind of think outside the box and it's just good content in general. Why can't have really nice things? Instead, we are focusing 
on features that are inherently bad and just hurt player retention because they want you to wail as hard as possible in Clash of Wits and Dark Visions. And the last one is probably the most obvious one. It's a communication. Like it's easily the worst part in the game right now. We have no idea what's going on with the game. Why was Nicole's story event skipped, for example, amongst all the other story events? Like, Gumi could have said in just one sentence, we didn't have the time to finish translation for the billions of languages that we have to do. I would have been totally content. That's an absolutely fine reason. I get it. Doing a story event for Luis was probably hard. It's a global exclusive unit. A lot of development time is going into this. A lot of translation time is going into this. Absolutely understandable. But just leaving us here, they left us hanging pretty much. They just took a rain check, dumped this unit on us. And especially those people of you who care about the story, they are left wondering, how did Nicole become a pirate all of a sudden? I don't know. But you gotta read this up on the Japanese side of things because they had the story event. Like, what are the plans for skipped EX plus 2 and 3 abilities for Nicole? Yeah, they said they're gonna come sometime later, in the future. But the same things were said about latent abilities, ability awakenings, um, unit awakenings, such as Clown Prince Noctis and etc. Did we get them? No. Better example, Dragon Quest enhancements. We were promised them on the week they got released. And when did we receive them? Nine months later. Like. What is going on? Also another reason, why didn't we get Xyle NBA? I know, he's trash anyway. I just want to get the, the reasoning behind this decision. Why couldn't we have it? I mean, he is still in the game. The rewards are still handed out. We're still getting Xyle from the um, mocking rewards. Where's Seacard NBA? He was released at the same time that we got the... Um, uh, roughly around the same time when we got Nicole, he was on Ibarra's story event in JP, but where is Seacard? Is he going to be one of the NBAs that we are getting with the global exclusive fan units? We don't know, but any word on that would be cool. Same for Trials and Legend of Mana. And Vision World, will we ever getting? Will we ever get either of the collabs? I mean, Gumi certainly has a hate towards mana collapse because we haven't gotten most of them and I urge them or I dare them to release Trials or Legend of Mana because they are cowards. I don't know what's wrong. I mean they released FMA even though the units were inherently outdated upon release and it's only going to get worse with Trials of Mana at this point. Also why don't we get the um, reward updates for Dark Visions? It's another issue and what happened to the um, series boss battles SBB is the abbreviation of SSB. I don't know why I wrote SSB, but series boss battles. What happened to those? Or latent abilities? Unit updates? Are we getting them? Are they forever skipped? Just, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like a short notice would be enough. Like two sentences. What's going on? Do we get, do we get this? Do we not get this? Why don't we get this? It would pretty much satisfy my needs for information and communication. I know that the Japanese developers, they're not used to us Western communities because um, I've seen this more often than not in the early years, like 10 years ago, Fantasy Star Online, for example. Sega also didn't really communicate with Western players because the Japanese players, they just like the excitement of getting new stuff and communicating with Japanese players was always kind of, yeah, they're figuring things out of, on, their, on themselves and they're fine with what they're getting. But the Western audience, we work totally differently. We want to know what is going on. We want to get involved. We, we care about the game just as much as the Japanese crowd. I know that the Japanese players are very upset with Riku, for example, who got her NV base lately. The Japanese players are also just as upset as we are right now with the direction the game is going. And Gumi, neither Gumi nor Alam are actually communicating well at the time being. And I'm really hoping that this 
shift in mindset of Japanese players that they also really want to communicate and get involved in deciding the direction of the game is something that the higher up, higher up guys at Square Enix who are at the end of the day making all the decisions for this game realize that it's something important and they need to fix this issue at some point or else this game will not see the light of day when it's 6th anniversary on the global server because on the JP server the 6th anniversary is in October I believe is going to see the light of day. And that's the last thing I want because at the core Final Fantasy Brave Exvius is still a great game. I enjoy it still even though it has its huge flaws. And the last thing I want to see is just getting sidelined or service ends because Gumi was just too incompetent or Square Enix was just too stubborn to actively communicate and improve the game in ways that we players think it's good and it is good because all the suggestions that I've seen on YouTube, all the Reddit, they are reasonable and they don't hurt the bottom line for Gumi or Square Enix in the end. So yeah, that's the end of the video. Like I said, I had 15, but we are already past the half an hour mark and you could, and you can see how long this video could have gotten if I talked more about this. So thank you all for watching. And I'd like to hear your suggestions on what you think needs a serious improvement in the game right now and what you'd like to see. So yeah, thank you all for watching. Have a nice rest of the Saturday, uh, today is Sunday. <laughs> Sunday evening, morning, afternoon, wherever you're from. And we'll see each other on Thursday again for hopefully Final Fantasy VII. If it is, you will see me pull for FIFA RF if they're both released at the same time. I have no idea. I'm hoping. But yeah, we'll see each other on Thursday regardless whatever it ends up being. Maybe it's a global exclusive FanFest unit. Then I will do the daily challenge. So regardless of what happens, see you all Thursday. Bye bye.